have indeed. And look at that. There is little Hosanna sleeping not too far from where the squirrel was alarm calling. So it was perfect for us to go and check that squirrel because that allowed us to actually spot him lying in some shade. So he's back towards Twin Dam's area and having a good rest. So it must be his tracks that I found with that near that Verose Eagle Owl this morning. And well, I'm glad that we came and actually checked at that squirrel because it's allowed me to find him sleeping away in the shade as per normal. So really, really excited to see him again. I know it's in the similar place and he's pretty much fast asleep and not doing too much, but I didn't actually expect him to be here and, and I was when I saw that squirrel and the squirrel kind of went quiet I was thinking mm, maybe we've missed him but it was worth checking around and actually making 100% sure that he wasn't around and well there we go so it just goes to show you should always double check things even the most unreliant alarm calling animal out here is sometimes worth checking out but he's fast asleep there is a bit of a breeze blowing so where he's lying now is absolutely perfect he's got the breeze that's kind of coming off the water side it's a nice cool breeze and he's in some shade so he'll be feeling rather satisfied with life now does it look like he might have had a small meal last night he's got a bit of a roundish tummy it's not round round but maybe he caught something like a scrub here or something like that you can see there's a bit of a bulge there i know yesterday he was also looking quite full but that's definitely a little fuller than what i saw last night so i think he's maybe caught something small and maybe like i say maybe something like a scrub here he likes scrub hairs also we know lots of cane rats around the mulawati system especially down south towards little gari could have got maybe a cane rat or you never know what else he's found maybe a squirrel or a terrapin or something like that so it seems as though him and chongile have graduated from terrapins though Justin you say ah oh, Hosanna sleeping as usual he has been a very sleepy cat of late hasn't he he's spent a lot of time resting and taking it very easy around twin dams but I'm not going to complain I would rather watch a sleeping leopard any day of the week then no leopard at all so i'm super happy that he has spent time he's really been this cycle for me or well, in the last few weeks at least he's been probably the most the leopard i've seen the most which is really good because i went for a long period where i actually didn't spend much time with Hassan at all in the first few months i was here he was far more elusive than what Shungile was and it's been so nice to actually catch up with him and get to know him a little bit better and so i've thoroughly enjoyed all of our Hosanna sightings that we've had and he's provided us with great sightings it started out with the Tandy shadow sighting at treehouse and then he had his kill and he was up and down he played around with hyenas the one morning was very playful with his stick and then we had a situation where he came down to this area he had the square off with the tumba we've had him at last night going after varying different things and moving around all over the place and so he's he's not been too bad while we've had lots of bouts of him sleeping we've also had really great activity from him he's hunted as well so we've had a, a good time with osana and i thoroughly have enjoyed every minute that we've been managed to spend with him over the last little bit. Philip, there comes a whole bunch of impalas. Now this is going to be interesting to see. You can see they've spotted the car and immediately they're like, hang on a second, the cars don't park there normally. What is going on? So I wonder if they will see this leopard. I don't think so. Maybe they'll just watch us for a bit and hopefully Hasana doesn't move his tail or anything like that and give himself away. And it'll be interesting to see what happens with Hosanna if the impalas do come to drink but Philip the thing the reason why a squirrel will alarm call is because let's say the squirrel comes out onto a branch Hosanna all of a sudden lifts his head for some reason which they do do even going from sleeping they sometimes twitch in the air or lift their heads and that squirrel hasn't noticed that leopard then so he's shouting or she's shouting to warn everybody else hey I've seen a predator here even though it's sleeping we know that leopards can go or lions or any predator can go from sleeping to hunting in a, a matter of seconds and so it's telling everyone I've spotted something here be careful everybody don't worry you know don't come too close and be aware of what's going on and so even a sleeping cat is a dangerous cat and so that's why the squirrels are alarm calling even at a sleeping individual oh dreaming 
Look at him dreaming. <laughs> Elana, 14 years old. Hello, Elana. You want to know, does he ever interact with his sister? I haven't seen him interact with his sister since that night with Tani, and that's because we haven't seen his sister since that night. So it seems as though very little interaction with her these days. Obviously, we don't know what goes on in the middle of the night. Sometimes he might bump into her, and they might stay together for a little bit and then break apart. But it seems as though that is really starting to come to an end. Although the day that she fought with Tandi, Hosanna was lying right next to her, and the two of them were as though they had never been apart. So I think they still recognize each other, but their amount of interaction together seems to be a lot less. Hosanna seems to love the southern section a lot more than what Shongile does. I think Shongile has found a lot of pressure coming from the likes of Tandi down here and is, has shifted northwards from what we can make out. Obviously, the, the last month has been difficult because we really haven't seen any sign of Shongile and we don't actually know. I suppose we have seen signs, we've seen tracks for her, but we just don't know where she's hanging out that much. And so the likelihood of her bumping into Hosanna if she's spending more time up towards the north is less because he seldom is up near Juma Camp. He tends to spend most of his time around this area and Little Gari. Are you what are you dreaming about? There's lots of twitching going on all over the face and it's not flies I was looking to see if maybe flies were landing on him but it doesn't look like it it looks like he's really just having a bit of a twitch now the impalas are slowly but surely coming down to drink you can see they're a bit nervous they're unsure about why I'm parked here this is an unusual place for a vehicle to be and impalas make no mistake are not stupid animals they know full well that there are predators that lurk in these areas and that they need to be careful and that vehicles sometimes follow predators. You'll find impalas always stop and look at vehicles when they're parked in odd places and you can see them slowly but surely coming down. Now I do apologize if there's an aerial in the way, it's just where we've parked with Hosanna means that the impalas are kind of behind me at the moment. Um, I will just, I don't want to move now because that will most certainly attract the attention of these impalas, but what we need is these impalas to make some sort of a noise and for Hosanna then to wake up and see them. But he's really got very little chance here, unfortunately. Those impalas are way out in the open and he won't get anywhere near them. They've come down too quickly and he's not in a position where he can stalk them unless they start moving around to this section, which I suppose is possible, but I doubt it. I, I doubt that he's going to be able to get anywhere near these impalas over the next little bit. He's going to have to, unfortunately, just be patient and wait for a while. I also don't think the impalas are going to walk straight towards us. We know impalas very seldom do do that. They're not like things like buffalo or even nyala or kudu that will kind of walk in our general vicinity. They they tend to be animals that like to just shift off from us a little bit. They, they're wary of vehicles and it's interesting just watching them. They're super nervous about drinking. They probably can pick up a scent that maybe a cat has been around. You never know if Hosanna at some point was drinking in this area. So like I said, I do apologize about the area. I just don't want to start and attract any attention to Hosanna and, and disturb either the Impalas or him um, too much. And, you know, at the end of the day, the Impalas are hot, they're thirsty. It's a risk for them to come and drink. So I don't want to put them off either. I want them to at least get the water that they want and leave them to, to carry on with the day. But how beautiful is that reflection as they move around the dam? Very pretty, isn't it? Well, I think so anyway. Hosanna, there's food behind you. I think Hosanna is so fast asleep, it almost looks like he's drooling. Uh, if you have a look just below his chin, there's a little wet spot on the soil that I didn't notice until now. So if you have a look just in, there we go. You can see, it almost looks like he's so fast asleep that there's a bit of drool that has come out. Hosanna, are you a tired boy that you're drooling? Seems like it. Also, the thing is, the impalas have made no noise whatsoever, and there's no oxpeckers, so there's no oxpeckers alerting him to the presence of these impalas. If there was oxpeckers, they would squawk and squeak and make a lot of noise, and he would know, okay, hang on a second, oxpeckers mean potential food, and he would then pop his head up. But the lack of oxpeckers making noise means the impalas are actually very quiet as they move around within this particular section, and it seems like they won't be able to drink. Jerry, you say you, he's probably dreaming about an Impala burger. Maybe. Well, there's an Impala burger just behind him. Should he want one? Oh, making a problem again. Can you hear me now, Senzo? There we go. That's better. So I do apologize about our loss of 
audio. We know this morning I had a few issues with it, and hopefully it will go away and stop its nonsense. We will send the bad juju away. But talking about burgers, we actually had burgers for lunch today, very delicious burgers. There was even a little garlic sauce there, and I was saying to Lou and Megan, I, I called Amanda's burgers the death burger because they are these massive things that could feed probably about five people, and um, they have got these big freshly made bread rolls, and we get obviously this massive burger patty on it, and it really is quite delicious, but they make you feel like you've eaten, like I say, 10 or 12 burgers instead of just one. What's that? We can't finish them. You can't finish them. There you go. Senza just says you can't finish them. So I didn't eat the, the roll today. I just had what was inside the roll because otherwise it makes you feel so heavy, particularly when it's a bit warm, that you kind of can't move afterwards. So they are amazing, but they definitely are not for the faint-hearted, that's for sure. But you can see our impalas are going without Hasana even realizing Judy is asking if the Hasana would not smell the Impala. You would think he would, but maybe just the way that the wind is blowing, it's not quite coming from where he is. It might be, I mean, from where they are. It might just be shifting slightly off because it looks like it's coming from an easterly direction and they are north of us. So maybe their scent is just blowing a little sort of north of him and he's actually not picked up their scent at all also they were very quiet there was no sign of any ox peckers which would have led to him being able to like i say hear them and therefore this is the situation that we end in where he's still sleeping and parlors have come down and gone and poor asana has missed a chance either way though he would never have really gotten this right it's not the right way that it for for hunting he's he's out in the open even if he popped his head up those impalas would have seen him immediately as soon as his head went up they would have seen him so he needs a situation where he needs to get into one of these quarry thickets and then wait for them to drink and then basically come past him again before he comes out and kills one but i reckon in the near future we are going to find husana on a carcass here somewhere him or tumba one of the two they spend so much time at twin dams at the moment it's getting dry it, it, the dams are drying by the day and i reckon that sooner or later one of them is going to figure out a technique here and they're going to grab themselves a big carcass in this area and, and be able to then have a really big meal the problem with twin dams is there's not really that many trees that he can drag it into he's got a situation where he's got to kind of drag quite far towards the Mulawati to get it into one of those big jackalberries maybe so it's going to be a hard place to keep a kill in this area also lots of hyenas come past here during the night Adele, you're asking if I think Hosanna will be a big male when he's fully grown. Adele, the leopards of the Sabi Sands, all the males generally are rather large. Um, there's very few small males that we've had in the Sabi Sands. Um, they tend to all be quite big, given that there is a lot of prey items here. They get a lot of protein um, in the form of big animals like impalas. And, and so they generally, a lot of them also get from, they have really good mothers that give them a lot of food. And so they, they do grow quite big. Um, whether or not he's going to be the biggest male, I don't think so. I don't think he's quite got the potential to be that big. His paw size and and his and his general body size is not th massive. Um, I don't think he's going to be that big, but you never know. Sometimes they go through growth spurts when they hit that testosterone flush as they become these dominant males where they start to try and dominate and they start to scent mark that causes this flush of testosterone which bulks them up and in he might be i think wherever he goes he's going to be a male that's going to be very squat and quite well built i think he's going to be quite a wide leopard much like what Mvula was Mvula is not the tallest but he's a big leopard in that he was wide he was muscular he was powerful and i think that's going to be the same situation with Hosanna. Tumba, on the other hand, I think maybe is going to be a little bit bigger. And we know that the two of them met recently. Tumba is six months younger and was about the same size as Hosanna already. So, you know, he's got that six month period where he's going to grow and we'll see who's going to end up bigger. The thing is about male leopards is it's not so much about how big they are. I mean, size does help, but it's going to be experience and it's going to be their way that they move around and, and they use their brains to that first little bit because the the thing is, is he's going to have to find a territory where he's not going to compete because he'll never be as big as a dominant male straight off the bat and so they have to use their brains a little bit and their cunning and their and their sort of knowledge of an area to be able to dominate but while we watch hosana sleep and rest i believe taylor mccurdy's out and also has a flat cat